welcome to the latest addition to the Compliance Podcast Network, a podcast 10 for 10, which brings you the week's top 10 compliance stories curated together in one podcast each week. Tom Fox, the voice of compliance, brings you the compliance professional stories you need to be aware of at the end of your busy week. Sit back and in 10 minutes, hear about the stories every compliance professional should be aware of. Every Saturday, 10 for 10 highlights the most important news, insights, and analysis for the compliance professional, all curated by the voice of compliance, Tom Fox. Get your weekly filling of compliance stories with 10 for 10. Hosted by Tom Fox. 10 for 10 is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. First, a word from the sponsor of the Compliance Podcast Network for this month, Ethico. If you're a compliance officer, middle managers are crucial in getting your programs from you to your frontline employees. But how do we activate those managers and get them on our side? Ethico's new middle manager toolkit equips you with the skills needed to empower your managers, to promote a culture where ethical behavior thrives and employees feel empowered to speak up. Learn how to turn frontline managers into ethical leaders with our new white paper, Empowering Middle Managers as Ethics Champions. And did I mention you can get the whole toolkit for free? Head to ethico.com to download the full toolkit today. 10 for 10 for the week ending September 7, 20. 24. Our first story is uh, comes to us from the Financial Times that the Nigerian fintech chief Dozi Mombosi was fined $250 million by a federal district court after he defaulted on a Securities and Exchange Commission charge against him for not showing up to contest the charge or even answer to the court. The uh, SEC described his entire set of holdings as a fiction. And, of course, he availed himself of U.S. jurisdiction, so he had to answer for his crimes, which he didn't do. And now he's $250 million short. Uh, next up, uh, although not anti-corruption compliance, certainly healthcare compliance, as 7 million pounds of boar's head meat have been recalled since late July when serious illness and deaths begin to occur. Boar's head meat is uh, one of the most ubiquitous deli meats literally across the country, and seven people have died from listeria. Dozens have been hospitalized. The outbreak has been traced to one plant in Jared, Virginia, where inspectors had documented repeated problems. So is this going to be another um, Bluebell ice cream situation where the board of directors did not have a health safety committee? Or uh, is this localized to the plant? It's hard to believe it's not going to go to more senior levels, though. Uh, first is a couple of stories from OCCRP. That's the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project. And this involves the ongoing imbroglio of Stewart Healthcare, the Boston company, who's been investigating FCPA allegations. Well, now, uh, and it was for a license to have a hospital in Malta. It turns out that their middleman, agent, go-to guy who played the key role in helping the company land the massive public contract is now at the heart of Malta's biggest corruption scandal ever. And boy, that's saying something. The consultancy fees, which were allegedly paid to secure the $2.1 billion, billion euro contract, excuse me, to renovate, was uh, based upon a time and effort. However, it turns out that the agent was given uh, a big cult of stock or other interest in the uh, new venture going forward. So you can see things are going dark for Steward Healthcare. Uh, from the New York Times, Martin Winkle, Winter, excuse me, Martin Wintercorn, the former head of Volkswagen, who led the company during the time of the admissions testing scandal is finally standing trial. Yes, nine years later, the German justice system is moving ever so slow, and he's standing trial for knowing what was going on. 
Uh, next up, HP is going after the widow of deceased Mike Lynch, claiming he owes or the estate owes four billion dollars for a judgment, they civil judgment they got in the United Kingdom. Of course, he was cleared of all criminal charges in the United States in a criminal trial earlier this year. So it's going to be interesting to see what the British court does this time around. Our next story is one of three from the Wall Street Journal this week. This one from the Risk and Compliance Journal. David Smagala reporting that the SEC has settled with six credit rating providers for off-channel communications. Moody's Investors, S&P Global, AM Best, Fitch Ratings all agreed to pay a total amount of $49 million in civil penalties for the latest uh, in the latest settlement over the use of off-channel communications. The SEC said the firms failed to maintain and preserve records of off-channel communications, including texting and platforms such as WhatsApp. So the firms acknowledged their conduct and agreed to improve compliance programs going forward. From Al Jazeera, an interesting story that a poll taken in South Africa shows that South African youth are leaving and immigrating out of Africa because of corruption. So we typically think of climate change, bad economics, uh, war, devastation, hunger, but corruption ranks right up there with them, and it really shows the invidiousness of corruption. We previously known that corruption leads to crime, leads to terrorism. Well, now it's leading to one of the world's biggest times of immigration. Our next story from the Wall Street Journal, also from the Risk and Compliance Journal, this time Richard Vandeford reporting that the mining company ENRC is seeking some $290 million from the serious fraud office over its botched corruption investigation. This is the situation where the SFO opened a probe into the mining company after improperly obtaining tips from a lawyer who was working for the company. Well, was that a conflict of interest? Lawyer, of course, was Neil Gerard from Deckard, who was supposedly representing ENRC, but met privately with SFO officials some 30 times to give them inside information about the uh, company. The uh, award, pre- or rather, a court has previously found the SFO violated uh, laws in uh, obtaining this information going to have to pay the piper. So it's going to be interesting to see what monetary damages the court awards. Our uh, next story from the Wall Street Journal uh, comes to us from the media markets coverage, or markets and finance, I should say, Alexander Sadie reporting that a whistleblower in Bank of America has led the bank to investigate allegations that bankers in Asia shared non-public information with investors before the bank sold hundreds of millions of dollars worth of stock. The whistleblower complaint alleged that bankers shared transaction details with investors before a stock sale in India was announced this spring. The Wall Street Journal, which had reviewed a copy of the complaint, uh, potentially the investors engaged in front-running obviously sharing non-public information ahead of a major sale of publicly traded stock is illegal in many countries, even India. So go figure there. And the last thing Bank of America needs is more bad news now, but the whistleblower's complaint filed in June also cited separate concerns about the bank's conduct in a $500 million initial public offering of stock for SoftBank, uh, backed retailer First Cry and a $300 million rights offering for the Carlisle Bank BNP House Financing. And our final story comes to us from Bloomberg, and it is about the uh, Biden administration is going to block the Nippon Steel uh, purchase of U.S. Steel. So domestic concerns went out. 10 for 10 is a special production of the award-winning Compliance Podcast Network. As I mentioned at the start of this podcast, our network sponsor is Ethico, and they've got a great new service offering for you, a middle manager's toolkit. We've linked to it in the show notes, and it's available to you at no cost. Uh, Many companies struggle with getting information to middle managers, which allows them to be the first line of response in a speak-up culture and ethosphere has answered this challenge by putting together a middle manager's toolkit. Check it out in the show notes. 
Thanks so much for listening to this episode of 10 for 10. I hope you'll check out the newest podcast in the Compliance Podcast Network, the Compliance Tip of the Day. In Compliance Tip of the Day, I give a five to eight minute summary of one tip that you can uh, integrate into your compliance program or put together for greater compliance program efficiency.